Alright. Um, welcome to uh, episode 3 of the working from home adventure. Uh, we're going to talk about films today. I feel I'm going to choose some DVDs from the case. And I'll do a quick review, maybe a quick synopsis of the film. So, spoiler warning, I will be giving things away. Uh, feel free to not watch it if you don't want to catch any spoilers of any films. But, uh, I mean, nobody buys DVDs anymore, do they? So a lot of them are quite old films. If you haven't seen them by now, then that's your problem, really. Go with the times, you know, it's 2020. Jesus. Anyway, I'll uh, give a quick sort of scan of the uh, of the DVD case, but I'll uh, I'll just be picking a handful. I won't just be quick reviewing them. These are my favorite ones, probably from the the case, but they're not my favorite films of all time because sometimes we haven't got DVDs of them because you know just taking up space now, isn't it? When in, it's all in the cloud now, isn't it? Don't know how clouds hold how that kind of storage. I thought it was just sort of rain. I thought it was just rain in the clouds, but it turns out you can have like films and pictures in them. God knows. 2020, I don't understand technology. It's amazing. Okay, right, here's a quick scan of the uh, cabinet now. Some blinding films in there, isn't there? That. That's only row one. Down to row two. Yes. What a selection. Obviously, I'll be picking a handful out. But if you see any there that you like the look of and you want me to review, by all means, just give me a shout. We're on to row three. What a treat. What a treat for you guys. Yeah, great selection. But things that we'll probably notice some sort of live DVDs there. Got a death one there, have some metal. Dream Theater, some Man United DVDs, you know. There's some games down here. And some uh, Blu-rays on that side. Lovely. Right. Uh yeah, so I've got a few got a handful of DVDs here. Uh, that I'm going to just quick review slash synopsis. Give might give them a rating out of 10 like I did with the games. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, get cracking with the first one. The first one I've selected for you guys. The Deer Hunter. The Deer Hunter. Yes. It's a long one. Long film. Very slow. Uh... About, about the Vietnam War, isn't it? I mean, there's lots of films and lots of American films about the Vietnam War. I think if, the way I see it is if you watch a film about the American War, they obviously highlight how brutal it was, don't they? They highlight how brutal it was. Almost as if they're compensating from the fact that they lost that war. They lost that one. So they're showing you, look how horrible it was. Look how disgusting it was. Just to kind of deflect from the fact that, oh, it was so horrible. We didn't want to win. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, it's just about a guy who, uh, about a group of mates who uh, go off to the Vietnam War. And a few things happen. And then they like to play, uh, one of them gets a bit addicted to Russian roulette. It's got Robert De Niro. It's got a quite good cast, actually. Rob De Niro, Meryl Streep, um, Christopher Walken. Yeah. John Cazale. John Cazale, isn't it? I like John Cazale. I think I've seen every John Cazale film. Um, if anyone doesn't know who John Cazale is, if you know The Godfather, he plays Alfredo. Bit of a weak, sort of, just plays a, plays a weak kind of guy. He plays a weak kind of guy in this. He played a weak kind of guy in Dog Day Afternoon. Uh, yeah, he's just a bit of a, 
bit of a pansy in most things, but he's just a good, decent actor. Apparently he was married to Mel Street but uh, when he died, so there you go. Bit of bad information. Uh, this is okay. This is okay. I don't mind it. I like films, so... And uh, this comes under one of the films that I like. It's quite fun. I got a lot of patience for slow films. I'll give it a standard 7 out of 10. It's alright. It's fine. Moving on to a completely different film. I'm going to go on to uh, District 9. District 9. Uh, lost track of this one because I hadn't seen the first date. So I wasn't really sure where I was with the story. Bit lost. Kind of felt like I was chucked into it. Suddenly there was aliens and they weren't very good. So. No. Set in South Africa. Vietnam, South Africa. We're going all the way, all the way around the world here. But yeah, it's, uh, it's all right. It's good. Uh, I think it's pretty an acting film debut for Charlotte Copley, who then went on to be in other, other things such as The A-Team. That was great, wasn't it? Everyone loved that film. Awful. Yeah, so uh, it's all right. It's about aliens, isn't it? What do you want to know? Aliens. I think it's like a mockumentary style that gets into a bit of an action flick at the end. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's all right. Okay, yeah. Uh, another seven, I think. Another seven. Looking forward to District Ten. District Ten should be quite good because they've set up nine. I've not been able to find the first date anywhere though. So if anyone. Leave some comments if you can let me know what the first what happened in the first eight films. Might make this one a bit more give this one a bit more relevance. Before to the tenth though. If they've made nine, they might as well make a tenth, don't they? Uh let's go on to a different film. Django Unchained. I am a big Tarantino fan, but I prefer his later films, like one of these. Um He's got some good earlier ones. I just feel like they're a bit Bit bitty, bit all over the place. He hasn't quite tightened the screws. And the last few, I've not seen this most recent one, the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but his last few being Jang uh, Django Unchained, Glorious Bastards, oh. demonetized, and uh, what was it? Hateful Eight. I loved him. I loved him. I think he's he's the he's one of the best script writers. I think there is. The dialogue in these films is absolutely enthralling. Lots of use of the N-word in this. So if you're of a sensitive disposition, you might want to give that one a miss. 18. 18. Not many 18s nowadays. I suppose it's still the... And I think his, his idea of the human anatomy is that everyone is just a big sack of blood. That's ever, what everyone is. You shoot them and blood just comes out all of the time. Every time. Just keep lots of blood. Like they're just big blood balloons. That's what everyone is. Uh anyway, yeah. It's about what's it about? Uh slavery and racism. Bit of that. Yeah, it's just about a guy who's um who was a slave and is set free and he goes basically goes after they go after a they go to find his wife, don't they, who's owned by a slaver. Trying to, yeah, I think that's the plan of it. It's all right, it's good, I enjoyed it. It's, a, it's an eight, it's an eight for me. Got one here. Sir Seven N. Sir Seven N. Sir, there you go. Sir Seven N. Sir Seven N. Decent. Decent. Uh, who's the director of this one? Don't say. Comment the director. Uh, three points to the first correct answer. How about that? Three points. Yeah, it's good. It's um, it's about a guy who commits crimes based on the seven deadly sins. Seven deadly sins, obviously, being uh, pride, sloth, envy, greed. 
and then the other ones. One of them, I think, is supporting Bristol Rovers. I think that's one of them. Yeah, so we just committed those crimes and uh, then... Um, spoilers, head in the box. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say for that one. So 7N gets a so 7N out of 10N. Next is one of my favourite films of all time. Shawshank Redemption. Amazing. Amazing film. No, two Morgan Freemans in a row. Not sure if that's got anything to do with it. Great film about being in prison and wanting to get out. It's good. It's good. I think it's the only good film Tim Robbins has ever been in. I think people set him, set him on a high pedestal on that, and then he goes and do does things like uh, I think he had a cameo in Anchorman. Strange. Yeah, his career never really reached that height again. He was really like I think he's in War of the Worlds played uh played the mental, the mentalist in War of the Worlds, yeah. But great film about prison and not, not liking it and ha there's horrible people in prison in charge of the prisons and all that. Yeah, decent. Gets a nine for me, one of my favourite films of all time. Emotional. Now as I mentioned in the game, if you know me, you know I am a fan of Batman. I am a big Batman fan. And this is the 1890-97 Motion Picture Anthology. So the four films involved are Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Mixed opinions about this box set, okay? It contains my favourite film of all time, Batman. That one there. That one. Batman has uh, Michael Keaton as Batman, Jack Nicholson as Joker. My favorite film of all time. I can recite it word for word. If uh, I, if at any point that might be what what someone wants me, basically just reading out the script from memory of uh, of bat of the Batman film. I could do that. I could do that if you got a spare couple of hours. Yeah, no problem. That's my favorite film of all time. Batman Returns. Nowhere near that level. However. Still interesting, very dark though, very classic Tim Burton-esque. I think he was given a blank check on that one, just do what you want, Tim, go mental. And he ends up then making a man who looked like a penguin trying to enslave children. So that's what happens if you give Tim Burton, Tim Burton too much slack and they decided not to renew his Batman contract. So they gave it to a guy who has uh, done pretty much nothing of any credit uh joel schumacher name a good film i don't know one that he's ever done i don't know a good joel schumacher film uh he did batman forever camped up ridiculous um that one had then brought in val kilmer as as batman val kilmer jim carrey as riddler tommy lee jones as two-face nicole kidman played some sexy lady as what often happens in these superhero films Chris O'Donnell. Yeah. Don't know. Don't know. I think he was in a film with Al Pacino once and then that was it really. And then they thought, well, you were with Al Pacino. Do you want to play Robin? Normal, normal question, normal path. I'm surprised that uh, they didn't offer Marlon Brando, Marlon Brando the role for Robin, but there you go. Um, yeah, uh, not good. Not good. Not a good film, uh, but it wasn't the worst one. Batman and Robin is genuinely one of the poorest high-budget films I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I love Batman, and the only reason why I watch it is because there is a man with a Batman suit on there. That is basically it. Everything else is awful. Uh, the man in the Batman suit is awful. George Clooney just being George Clooney with a Batman mask on. Um... Uh, he's good in other things, just awful in this. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was Mr. Freeze. He really tried. There was no scenery left for him to chew. It was mental. Uh, the stupid ice puns. Don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of the pun. But when it comes to Batman being all dark and dour and it's supposed to be mystical and it's supposed to kind of, kind of earnest... Uh, you got a man who says, I still see you. Like, come on. Uma Thurman as well. 
as uh, Poison Ivy, Elysia Silverstone, Clueless, Clueless Casting, definitely, but uh, yeah, there you go. Um, if I had to rate them, rate the four, if I was to give the box at an average after I've rated the four, so I'd give, I'd give Batman 10 out of 10, it's my favourite film of all time, it has to be 10. Batman Returns, 7 out of 10. Batman Forever, 4. Batman and Robin, 1. 5, 12, 5, yeah. 22 out of 40. Not great. Not great. But I bought this basically just so I could have a DVD copy of of my favourite film of all time. I haven't got the Blu-ray, but that will be added to the collection soon. We've got one film left, and it's another one of my favourites of all time, and it's a Blu-ray, it's an extended version. The Return of the King. Big Tolkien fan, and this is just amazing. Uh, if you've got a spare five and a half hours, then just, I, but you've got to revisit it. If you're, a, if you, I go back to it every couple of years, me and if you want to say we sit down and go, right, let's just smash through. We just have a day and just smashing through Lord of the Rings. It's brilliant. I absolutely love it. Um, the One of the emotion, most emotional scenes of all time is when the Rohirrim ride down to Pelennor Fields. What an amazing, amazing moment that is. Um, fantastic. It's a 10 for me. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant film. Wouldn't, wouldn't, I mean, the scary thing is with, with what the way things are nowadays, people are always rebooting things and remastering things and all that. I wonder if they're going to do it with this. I hope to God they don't. They got it right the first time. No need to prove on that, but I'm not the guy with the money, am I? I wish I was. I wish I was. Um, but there you go. That's my film review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want me to review any other films or maybe watch a film I've never seen, there's a, there was a DVD cab I showed you there, but there might be some films I've never seen in there. Uh, if you want me to, I'm not a big horror film, so don't suggest horror films because I'm not going to watch them. Don't see the point. Don't see the point in just watching films that, uh, that are there just to make you feel horrendous the entire time what's the point in that rubbish uh but yeah i like films and uh if we're going on the binary rating the binary rating basically does it if it's a one out of one it makes you briefly forget the fact that you're going to die one day if it's zero you're constantly reminded uh most of them do get a one the only ones that don't get a one are probably Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. That's it. But I've got loads, loads of DVDs, loads of Blu-rays, loads of films that I do love that I don't have a DVD of, so I can't review them. But if you uh, want me to talk about them, give me a shout. Uh, I should really work out which one it is. Subscribe. Bell. Subscribe bell. One of those. One of those is the right way around. Uh, yeah. I've had a lovely time. Sorry, it's a late one. But uh, I've been working, and then the missus came home a bit early, so didn't have any time. Don't want her to be involved in the video. Don't want her to steal credit. Still focus. I'm the, I'm the central one here. I'm not even allowing the dogs to get involved because, we all know, I want people to come here to see me. I don't want people to come here to see the dogs. Okay. They get enough attention. About time. About time old Jamie gets some. You know what I mean? All right. Well, it's been fun. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. It's Saturday. It's not technically a working from home day because technically I'm off Saturdays. But uh, I'll do a bonus one anyway. Mrs. is working. So let's go for it. Trisa.